Families in Texas and right here at home are still grappling with the scenes and heartbreaking images of the horrific massacre at Robb Elementary School. Joining us now is Maryland Delegate Leslie Lopez. On Delegate Lopez, I want to get your reaction to the Texas shooting in just a second. But first, let's talk about your own deeply personal experience. You survived a school shooting when you were just seven years old. Let's start there. Tell us what happened. Sure. Um, well, thanks for having me on. Um, even on such a heavy day, it's it's good to talk about um, all the potential that we have ahead of us on this issue. Um, you know, in, in my specific circumstance, um, you know, to take it a step back, you know, when I ran for office, I never really expected to be the gun bill person. Um, there's lots of issues of or on my mind and that have motivated me. Um, and once I got there and I was on the Judiciary Committee and started talking to folks, um, it, it really felt like this experience I had as a child um, was, you know, it kind of brought to the forefront of my, my brain. Um, it's an experience that, you know, happened when I was seven years old. You know, over the course of life, you get more scars and bruises and other experiences that are, you know, traumatic that you, that, you know, shape your consciousness. But um, I had never really processed um, what had happened then. And being in the position of, of being a lawmaker and looking at from that perspective, it really, um, it, it just really motivated me to be more active on gun bills. And so that's what I've worked on um, as one of my major issues as a lawmaker. Um, when I was seven, I was at recess, um, the recess before lunch, and a young man who was, I don't even think he was 21 years old, um, was, uh, we were told later in a letter to the teacher, the, the parents, um, that he had been abusing drugs that morning, and by all accounts seemed like a very troubled young man. And he had a small handgun. Uh, I don't recall the exact make and model of it, um, just because I was seven years old, frankly, and I don't I don't remember if they even told us. Um, given the time and the place, I am assuming that it was probably a Saturday night special, so very cheaply made. Um, cheaply acquired handgun. I don't think Saturday night specials had more than eight rounds in them, so they weren't weren't particularly um, powerful like the assault rifles that we see being used today, um, but still can be very deadly if they're if you shoot someone at close range. And so on this particular morning, I guess he, he woke up and um, and was abusing drugs and decided to shoot up the playground while we were at recess. Let's touch on that. How have you been able to recover and at least try to move on from such a painful memory? Yeah, I don't, I, you know, when things happen to you at such a young age, I don't know if you ever recover or if you just learn to adapt um, in, in your way and go about your life. And, and trauma, I, from what I understand, the technical definition is maladaptive behavior, right? You learn to um, deal with like, you know, the pebbles in your shoe as opposed to learning how, address, how to address them and take them out or learn how to not, not to get more of those pebbles in your shoe. And so um, I don't, I mean, I, it would be a wild guess for me to think like how I would be a different person if I didn't have that experience. Um, but, you know, I think if anything, it just deepens my sense of humanity in times like this. And you're also a new mom. We see your baby with you. And I think about all the parents who are angry, who are frustrated and just feeling so helpless, trying to take this in because unfortunately, it's become a new normal that surviving an active shooter situation has become a child's responsibility if someone opens fire in their classroom. So what's your reaction to yesterday's mass shooting? Well, you know, um, I, I had left the house yesterday afternoon um, to go get baby formula. And um, I looked down at my phone and I saw that I started to get text messages and notifications and I, I didn't look right away because I was, you know, on a mission. And eventually um, I got into the parking lot of Costco and I look at my phone and I see people texting me like thinking of you, you know, so angry this is happening again. Why, what, what is happening? What more can we do? And, and I read the news and, you know, I just started to cry there in the parking lot and you know, there was a time when I would cry about things like this from the perspective of, of being that kid hiding under a desk. And now as a parent, 
you know, I just see it from a, t a different perspective. And I see um, just the immeasurable amount of pain instances like this cause. And as a lawmaker, I see it as a, as a policy failing, as a social failing. I see all the things that need um, to be put in place to make sure that these types of things don't happen again. Um, and frankly, a lack of political will at the federal level to see them done. And from your own personal experience and just looking back at it now, what's your advice for parents? How should mothers and fathers talk to their children about school shootings and what happened in Texas? Yeah, you know, I think um, as parents, one of our primary roles is really to create a stable world for our children and be that source of stability and, and constants and, and strength for them. Um, and so, I, I think the best way to do that is just to respond to your child in an age appropriate way and to be open to their questions and to listen to their fears um, and their concerns um, in a place where you're not putting your own emotions into it, but really just being a safe place for them to, for them to be a sounding board for them. Um, you know, there's no way you can say as a parent, we, this will never happen to you. But we can say we'll do everything to make sure it doesn't happen to you. And these are the steps you can take if you see something um, to say something to an adult or, um, you know, someone trusted to, to observe things and to, um, you know, just be mindful of your own safety. And when we come back, we'll talk to Delegate Lopez about her bill that recently passed with bipartisan support to ban ghost guns and her fight to end gun violence in Maryland. We'll be right back.